Hello, Keith here and welcome to this review of our first six months experience of our solar and battery installation. Over the course of this video, I'll quickly recap what we have installed, what we are expecting in terms of savings, what the generation statistics were and what our costs and savings were. And ultimately, are we on target for our return on our investment? So first of all, let's do a quick recap. In terms of our local environment, apart from our neighbours to the east, the west side of our house doesn't have anything to really block the view of the sun. All the houses around us are a similar build, same height and are spaced apart. Also, you'll notice that we're not exactly east and west facing, and this is important when you look at the path the sun takes during the course of the year, which we will come to shortly. We do have a south facing garden and it is a sun trap. However, as you can see from this photo, the ridge of our house runs north to south and we have a gable end at the back of the house facing south. This does mean that our roof pitches are facing west and east. However, these pitches aren't obscured. We're not surrounded by buildings that will block the sun on these roofs. And while we have a large magnolia tree in the back garden to the west side of the house, it is regularly pruned and kept to size. Uh, as you can see from this image here, although it does look a bit bigger now than it did in this photo last year. Now, as mentioned, we are slightly off a perfect north-south alignment. We are also in the southeast on the Essex coast. Uh, Weather-wise, we do get a lot of sunshine hours. Uh, we do have reduced rainfall compared to the rest of the country. And being by the coast, we do get clear skies a lot of the time. And because of our surrounding environment, we do get varying levels of sunlight on each pitch. As can be seen by these graphics, during the winter months, the sun rises in the southeast and sets in the southwest, with the sun only reaching an elevation from the horizon of between 15 degrees and 26 degrees. And the solar day only lasts between eight to 10 hours. Whereas at the height of summer, the sun rises in the northeast and sets in the northwest, with the sun reaching an elevation of up to 62 degrees above the horizon, and the solar day can last anywhere between 15 and a half and 16 and a half hours. So with that in mind, our installation favours the west pitch, as we will get more sunshine on that pitch across the year, especially during the summer months when we could be generating up to eight o'clock in the evening. And because of this, this was the uh, solution that we selected. So we have 16 Trina 385 watt solar panels, and we have nine panels on the west facing roof, seven panels on the east facing roof. Our total installed solar capacity is 6.16 kilowatts. We also have five pylon batteries and they're in the loft and the total storage capacity of those is 12 kilowatts. And then we also have a Solis 5G inverter. And for those that are interested, uh, this is the installation in diagram form. And what you can see here is our installation cost. So broken down in terms of each individual item, we came to a total cost for the install of £13,936.19. Now, we did the installation through the Solar Together scheme, which is a UK government scheme where you as the consumer register your interest by providing some information about your house, roof and electricity usage. Uh, what then happens is installers bid for the work with a reverse auction, meaning the lowest bid wins, and the winning bid then sets the price for all solar systems and battery systems that are in that campaign. After the auction, consumers who participated receive a personal recommendation, which you either accept or not accept. And just for reference, I'd actually looked at solar together a few years previously to get an idea of cost, and I didn't accept the previous quote. So our original quote was just for the West pitch, but I elected to add six panels on the east side as well because I knew that there would be the opportunity to uh, utilise that pitch as well to generate some uh, energy. Now, as I said in the first video uh, that I published on YouTube around this, this is a significant outlay and one that I've managed to save the money for over a period of time. Now, I do recognise that this is not an option available to all and it would be a mistake not to acknowledge that I was in the lucky position to make use of my savings to be able to finance this. So in terms of our expected savings, uh, the installers forecast that we should see a 60% reduction 
of grid import based on our typical usage. So as you can see, this equates to a reduction of around £1,026 based on our current tariff projected against the last four years uh, grid usage of 6,351 kilowatt hours. And that was for the period between January 2021 and January 2022. Uh, and the total cost of that should have been £2,226 based on our current tariff if we didn't have uh, solar and battery in place. So with that in mind, our return on the investment should be around 12 years as a conservative estimate. And our installers initially thought it would be more likely to be nine to 10 years. And the continued increase in terms of electricity unit cost and standing charge costs means that the payback period is reducing significantly. And to explain this, let me show you how that changed from when I did my analysis in April 2022. And do note that this is based on our own tariffs, so it will differ for everyone else, dependent on the tariff that you're on, the location you're in, the setup that you choose, etc. So please do your own investigation because it won't be the same as what you're seeing here. However, when I looked at my last fixed rate, uh, based on my consumption during that deal, which was January two, uh, 2021 through to January 2022, I imported 6,351 kilowatt hours from the grid at a cost of £1,087.05. Uh, this was also the last year where I was on 100% grid import. So if we were installing our solar and battery storage installation at those rates today, assuming the installation cost is constant, my savings for the year would be £487.38 with a payback period of just under 29 years. At the end of that rate, there were no viable fixed rates as the energy cost increases were already taking effect on the energy markets. So in January 2022, we moved on to the standard variable rate, which meant we were then tied to the UK energy price cap. So that means that on the same consumption values, our predicted energy bill would have increased to £1,333.99 if we were taking those figures uh, as the uh, standard rate for today. So if I'd made my solar co-collections then, the savings per annum would have increased to £669.52 per annum, meaning a reduction in the payback period to just under 21 years. Three months later, I went through the solar together process, and based on the price cap that was introduced in 2022, uh, in, in April of that year, my cost for energy without the system in place, uh, based on um, the same usage uh, would have then gone up to £1,899.01 per annum. So that reduction in grid consumption for the year then equates to an annual saving of £857.13 and a payback period of just over 16 years. And then we come to the month after we just had the installation which was October 2022 and there was again another price increase across the market. So again, using that same uh, consumption uh, figure from 2021 and 2022, if we'd done the same calculations based on that price cap, we would have seen a total cost uh, in terms of energy uh, of 2,362 pounds and 59 pence for grid import. And so applying that 60% reduction, uh, that equates to a saving of £1,279.10 per annum and the payback period reduces again to just under 11 years. So using that initial consumption figure and applying uh, the different price rates at those particular points, our payback period based on that last full year of 100% grid energy reduced by over 50%. 50 so our electricity costs have doubled uh, from 15.93 pence per unit to 35 pence per unit and if the price cap hadn't been in place there was a potential for that to increase to around 50 pence per unit if that had happened our payback period would, would have reduced to something closer to four to five years so the energy costs and the increases in those costs are really reducing the payback period just purely because of the cost of energy at this moment in time. So now that we can see what our expected savings should be, 
how has the installation performed in its first six months? First off, it must be said that having had a install date at the beginning of September, we've only seen autumn and winter performance. So going back to the graphics showing the track of the sun for each month and the length and strength of the solar day, we were always going to see reducing performance. But then factoring as well that we had a battery failure for two and a half months, we're probably down on where we should have been based on the ability to actually be able to store energy on the batteries. But in terms of solar generation, we can see a pretty consistent curve in solar generation from a peak of 24.7 kilowatt hours that was generated on the 17th of September to a low of 0.3 kilowatt hours on the 18th of December. But I am noticing that even on relatively cloudy days, we are still getting some generation. And from the data here, uh, September and October were definitely the best months for solar generation as we came out of summer and into early autumn. So overall we averaged 7.2 kilowatt hours of generation per day uh, and also our highest export day was also the 17th of September when we exported over 17 kilowatt hours and we did export most days during November, December and January when the batteries were unable to store excess solar generation. Overall, our total daily house usage, including solar generation, battery storage and grid input, averaged around 21 kilowatt hours per day. But what you can see on the chart here is the impact of not having the battery storage working between mid-November and the end of January. And as the grid input takes around 80% of the house consumption during this period, uh, on average around 18 kilowatt hours per day was grid input, uh, then we were seeing uh, a significant increase in energy costs because we were importing more energy. So let's take a look at the first six months costs and savings. So first let's take a little bit of a historical look uh, at our energy consumption going back to January 2018, so just over four years. As you can see we are typically in the range of between 400 kilowatt hours and 600 kilowatt hours of consumption per month. Uh, there are a few things to note here. At points one, two and four, those drops in energy consumption are explained by the family just going away for a two week holiday each time. Point number three, uh, that's when we switched to Octopus Energy and unfortunately our smart meter uh, didn't communicate with their systems for a few months. So the red dotted lines are an average of each month, uh, February and March in the previous years. Point five is where we had our solar system actually installed. And from there we have two statistics, uh, the green being our actual grid input and the blue line being what our usage would have been if we didn't have solar, just by adding on the solar usage to the grid input. And point six is when our battery storage failed, meaning that we were using more grid input and December and January were also pretty cold months. But overall, our usage is fairly consistent over the previous four years. But when you look at costs historically, uh, this chart shows our energy costs over the same four year period. So we were typically in the 50 to 100 pound a month band with reductions in costs at points one and two, again, due to holidays and reduced consumption while we were away. Point three, uh, again, is where our smart meter wasn't communicating to Octopus Energy, meaning that our costs were lumped together. So again, this is an average of the same months in previous years. But points four, five and seven are where the price caps were set by the government. Everything prior to January 2021 was on low cost fixed tariff deals and they disappeared in the winter of 2021-22 as the cost of energy increased and consumer cost typically tracks behind the market costs. So from January 2022 onwards, our import costs have increased two to three times as to what they were in previous years. Um, point six shows when the solar and battery installation occurred. And again, I'll show the cost of our import after that installation in green, while the blue continues to show what the cost would have been without the installation in place. And point eight uh, shows the period when the batteries weren't working which is why our cost for grid import spike. So 
In our first six months, uh, we've generated 1.2 megawatt hours of electricity, of which we used 691 kilowatt hours directly from the panels and sent 417 kilowatt hours to the battery. We have then used 568 kilowatt hours from the battery and do remember that the batteries are topped up to 20% full from the grid when required. We've also imported from the grid nearly 2.6 megawatt hours. So in total, our house usage was 3.8 megawatt hours for the six months. We have overall saved 416 pounds and 75 pence on our electricity bill. Uh, 428 pounds and five pence if you add on the actual outgoing payments for Octopus Agile. And if the batteries had been working properly between mid-November and February, then that cost saving would have been higher. That would have also improved our solar utilisation rates as well. As you can see, we've averaged 18% of our electricity usage being from the panels and battery over the first six months. But for February, that jumped up to over 42%. And for March, we're actually getting closer to 50% utilisation. So these factors overall, uh, with regards to the battery failure, that has impacted our return on investment target. So we are currently at around 15 years for payback, as opposed to the potential 10 to 11 years that we saw earlier in the video. But as I've also mentioned, we've still not seen any spring or summer performance yet. So it will be interesting to see come September, when I do our first year review, whether we're actually closer to that target. So that was the first six months. I'm pleased with the amount of generation that we're seeing, and we are definitely going to see some real benefits as we get into spring and summer in terms of overall cost savings. The most frustrating part of the first six months is definitely that we were without our batteries for two and a half months during the middle of winter, and also that it took far too long to get a resolution. However, we are now back up and running, and we are seeing some great results in March so far. So next month, I will give my March update. And already we've seen many days where we're running at 65, 70% of our energy consumption actually coming from the solar panels and battery storage. So as always, let me know in the comments below if there's anything else you'd like to see. And if you found this video useful, please do like and subscribe. And I'll see you all for the next one.